hello, I didn't see you there. Hello, you're going to want a bucket of water with a few assorted brushes, a box lid, and two watercolor sets per table. And you're gonna need, and you're gonna need one of these, one of these. How much water do I have in here? <laughs> Only a little bit. There's a couple reasons for that. One, in case you bump it, not a whole lot's gonna spill. Two, because these brushes are made, they're made up of a piece of wood, bristles, and a piece of metal that fastens the bristles to the wood. And so there's glue that holds the metal to the wood. So if the water goes above the metal piece, water can get in between there and slowly over time disintegrate the glue and the metal will fall off and the brush will fall apart. If you've ever had a brush fall apart, it's from people drowning them with too much water. So a little bit of water keeps the spills from happening and it keeps the brushes healthy longer. There are three basic techniques I want to show you with the watercolors. The first one is called wet onto wet. The second one is called wet onto dry. And the last one is called wax resist. So when you're using watercolors, like I said, you don't need a whole lot of water. And you've got a variety of brush sizes, and they all do different things. So with wet onto wet, it's good to take a big brush. And notice these watercolors, you might think, oh, they're missing a lot of color. Or these are really trashy watercolors. That is not true, because watercolors last a long time. And I'm going to make you use them until literally there is no more solid chunks of paint in these little wells because there is so much paint in this well I'm showing you right now what you do is you add water and you stir it for a while and the longer you stir it the more vibrant the color I've been stirring this for about 20 seconds and I can get a lot of color out of it so that's wet on the dry basically the paper is dry and you can get detail and controlled shape with dry paper because the paint is only gonna go where your brush goes And the smaller the brush, the more detail you can get. Wet on the wet is different. Wet on the wet, you take water first. You make your paper wet. Then you stir in a color, you drop it like that, and it will spread out. You can do this with a bunch of colors and create some really cool effects. Ah. Like that. Or you can create what's called a wash, where you put some water down and you've got one color at the top, and you put a different color at the bottom, and you let them blend. Ooh. Now once colors dry, you can actually paint on top of them. So this is pretty dry. And I can take another color, such as yellow, and paint over top. What's gonna happen is you'll see where the two colors lay on top of each other. They create a different color, so that's a form of color mixing. But beware that if your paint is still wet and you go to paint something detailed next to it, that it might start to flood in to each other. I'll show you again here, see how this paint's really wet? I'm gonna take a vibrant color like yellow, and I wanna paint this yellow line next to it, and I want this line to stay yellow, and oh look, I got close to wet paint, and now it's ruined my yellow line. And our last effect is wax resist, where you take a crayon, any crayon will work, and you can draw something. Take a color. You want it really, you want a lot of water in it. Paint over it. And check that out. 
it stays protected. Ooh! So those are the three basic watercolor techniques. Feel free to experiment. I have scrap paper if you want to try it on scrap paper first before you work on your project. Don't forget, I have aprons. They can help protect your clothing from a disaster. You can wear them anytime.